Hey, it's Mark, but also get the land geek with a favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on this week's round table, we've got the usual suspects. We got dude, buddy, the nightcap OG, Scott Bossman. Scott, how are you? Great, Mark. And you? Good to see you. I'm okay. My back's a little tweaked, but you promised me you're going to fix it. If you're listening to this, it's already been fixed because I saw Scott at boot camp, and uh, with a few adjustments, I'm good. So thank you for that, Scott. Future me is uh, thanking you. Uh, we got the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm good. Looking forward to seeing you guys in person here in a couple of days. Yeah, absolutely. You're you're looking good, man. You got the boot camp haircut going. A lot of us are already lined up for that uh, today. And uh, we've got the most feared woman in the country. And she will also be at boot camp, although just for one day. Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, how are you? I'm great. I'm looking forward to boot camp. I love boot camp. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm great. We're looking forward to seeing you. And, uh, you know, he just makes me feel calm. The Zen master, Mike Zeno. Mike, how are you? Doing great. Doing great. Great to be here. Great to see you. Great, great to breathe in the mailing. Breathe out the marketing. Uh, the big papa, Tate Litchfield, is not on the round table, but we should give out some props to Tate. And then last but not least, the land geek, Sherpa, the professor, the brain, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. If you're not automating your Craigslist in your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. And of course, if you want to learn about anything, go to investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. But I think we have an excellent roundtable discussion. Before we talk about that, I just want to let the listeners know that today's roundtable is sponsored by Flight School. Learn how to start your land investing business with the best in a group setting, working in real time with your group, and have Scott Todd lead you up that land investing mountain as your Sherpa. So learn more, get on a call with the Nightcap OG or the Zen Master, go to landgeek.com forward slash training. Scott Todd, what are we talking about? All right, Mark. So oftentimes uh, we see people either, look, first of all, they might be just trying to start out or they're established and they'll go out and they will make this decision. And the decision they're going to make is that they're going to mail, I don't know, like a thousand offer letters at one time or, you know, 2000 offer letters at one time. I mean, like I heard this thing the other day that said, uh, if a little is good, a lot is great, right? Like if a little bit of something's good, then a lot of something is great. And I have my own opinion on like mass mailing all of these offer letters at one time, but I'd like to maybe test my uh, thought on that and also see what everybody else thinks. Should you mail like a boatload of offers at one time, like a thousand or more, or should you do something different? It's a great topic. And uh, I'd be really interested to hear what the dude buddy, the nightcap OG, Scott Bossman thinks about this. My father-in-law has a saying, Scott Todd, that's similar to what you were just saying. His, his saying is uh, anything worth doing is worth overdoing. But, uh, but with mailing, I would disagree with that. I think, I, I think it also depends on where you are in the spectrum. <clears throat> when, you're, when you're first starting out with this, I think a slow, steady approach uh, is the best way for a number of reasons. Number one, you're getting to know the area. Uh, you're getting to know the pricing in that county. Uh, and you don't want to send a thousand mailers somewhere and be inundated with uh, too much due diligence a few weeks later when you're first starting out. Now, if you're you know, down the road uh, and you know an area really well and you have the team in place to support, you know, the ability to, to manage uh, the intake that's associated with that many mailings, I think so be it, you know, send out a thousand mailings, uh, two, 3,000, I think uh, is, um, you need a really, really good team in place for that. So I guess that would be my, my recommendation, uh, especially to beginners to take it kind of slow and easy and, and, and test the areas that you're marketing. And you know, what if you have a bad list? Uh, every once in a while you come across a bad list. So you don't want to send out a thousand mailers uh, to somewhere where you're not gonna get any returns. Yeah, that, that 
totally makes sense, but maybe the technician, Eric Peterson, has a different view. Eric Peterson, what do you think? Can you send out too many offers at one time? Well, what I like is sending out my mail on a daily basis. So uh, for me, that's about 30 to 35 um, offers a day, seven days a week. They go out um, all month long. And the reason I like that strategy is it allows me to adjust my offers if there's a need. So let's say I'm exploring a new area or I'm a new investor and I don't know the area well. Well, if I send out a thousand on day one, I don't have any opportunity to kind of play with the pricing as I'm, as I'm going. But if I take that thousand and spread it out over a month, you know, in week two, if I'm not getting any response or week three or whatever, um, you know, maybe I might start to explore some other pricing. Um, the other thing I always do when I'm testing a new area or if I were a new investor, what I would recommend is, is testing your pricing along with the offers. So if you're going to mail out 20 offers a day or 200 a month or whatever it is, um, you know, take those, that list and segment it out and try, you know, let's say your ideal purchase price you think is a thousand dollars, you know, send out a quarter of that list at a thousand dollars, then maybe 1100, maybe 1200 and maybe 900 allowing you to explore the market a little bit and see where the response comes in most. And then, you know, you're going to learn something about how to buy property in that area based on the response you get from that. But, uh, you know, you could use that strategy and send all a thousand at once. But um, again, even if you mess that up, you don't have any opportunity to change it. Whereas if you're doing it little by little over time, you always have that opportunity to go back and adjust. And of course, you know, the rest of the business, having a consistent deal flow makes a lot of sense. So you're not inundating your due diligence team with, you know, 20 accepted offers coming in on any given day or, you know, anything like that. Instead, it's coming in steady, maybe a couple of week or whatever it is based on your deal flow. So I really like the the strategy of spreading it out. And we have the system to make that super easy. So um, why would you not do that? Yeah, I mean, it totally makes sense to me, um, for sure. And I, I love the, the agile philosophy. It's kind of like, you know, software. Like you just wanna be agile. You wanna make quick iterations and the same can be applied to your offers. Uh, Mimi Schmidt, the terrorist hunter. I completely agree with Scott and Eric. Um, I, did, I saw a Facebook post about someone who had made their first mailing and mailed 900 letters and only gotten two responses after six weeks. And I thought, ouch. Um, completely agree that you should spread them out. And it's not expensive either. I had a VA that for a year and a half sent 20 offers a day and it cost me $6 a week. So it's, 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 it's a better way to spend your money and, and, and having someone help you with it is easy too. So it's not like it's adding work if you're breaking it up and having it done every day. Have someone else do it for, you know, super cheap. Um, additionally, e even after you know your county and you want to send a thousand mail mailers, do you really, like, like Scott and Eric have said, do you have the staff, right? If you have one intake manager and in yourself, it's going to be really hard to manage the influx there really is. Um, I know someone that runs his business where he buys for three months a year and he sells for nine months a year. So he really doesn't have that land business going with all the space, the plates spinning. And you know how important it is to get that marketing momentum going. So the whole idea that you've paid for an annual subscription for a marketing platform and you're only using it for nine months, that, that's wasteful too, right? And rebuilding your, your accounts and Craigslist and getting them going again, all that momentum. Um, I just, to have to restart that engine up every year seems um, wasteful. So I just think it's, a, it's important to have a steady deal, deal flow in the beginning and when you're advanced uh, to break them up. So that's my opinion. 
I love it. I love it. I couldn't agree more, but I bet you the Zen master, Mike Zeno might have a difference of opinion. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> Mike. Well, Mark, we also have a quote at the fire department that says, uh, we can't do anything until we do everything. Therefore we do nothing. So sometimes it's uh, easy to overwhelm. And so I'll say that I have done that, sent out a thousand or more mailings. Um, but that was at a point when I felt very confident in a certain area and I had, you know, the capital set aside to acquire. I think in the beginning and even, you know, I haven't, haven't done it all different ways. The, the, the consistency approach I think is, is really uh, pragmatic. It, it's almost like going out, I guess, and buying a month full of groceries and stuffing them in your shelves in your fridge, right? It's not really necessary. And you might, some things might go bad because you can't pay attention to them. So, you know, um, I think it could be similar. You know, if you don't have a really tight system that can handle that, um, you know, you could lose deals uh, just because you can't put your attention to them. So I have done that where I've sent out a thousand minutes. I believe in dominating an area. And if I know I have the capital set aside, I, I certainly will when I know my pricing's tight. But I think this, there's been a lot of discussion on the Facebook and people talk about, um, you know, how many mailings you have to send out to get, and to gauge an area. And I, I think this, we talked about this before, right? And this is one of the dangers. Someone might say, well, geez, I, I guess I need to send out 1500 mailings and, and test the area, but that's not a good approach. You know, you, Scott Todd always talks about the market speaking to, and if you're not, if you're not listening, which means you don't have, you don't have time to listen, right? You got to have that reactive component of, waiting and seeing and, and listening to what people are saying when they're countering or accepting your offer. So I do think it's a, it's the best overall pragmatic approach just to be steady, you know, with it, the, uh, the tortoise and the hare, I guess the, uh, you know, it's the tortoise in this, in this approach. I love it. I love it. Um, and I like the, uh, the grocery analogy. I have my own analogy, but Scott Todd, do you want the, uh, the second to last word on this? I, I do. And then I have another question too. So, Okay. I'm going to steal another question. But like, my, my own opinion is that it's crazy. It really is crazy to go out and, and to, to deploy a thousand. I mean, everybody's kind of said the same thing here, right? To, to a thousand or whatever. It's, it's, it's a little aggressive. And what it reminds me of is um, like when, when you learn to fly a plane, one of the things that I was taught is like gentle on the controls, right? Like, if you, if you just imagine like you're in the air flying and all of a sudden like you need to turn. So what do you do? You don't, you don't bank the plane. I mean, I mean, maybe Dave Schmidt would bank the plane when he was in the military, right? Like, cause he needed to, but if you've ever been on an airliner, they're not, they're not jerking the plane around up there, right? Like it's a smooth, easy thing. It's a gentle turn. It's called a standard rate turn. Okay. So it, it takes light touches to turn the plane. And I think that that's the way it is with mailing too. It's like light touches, right? Like you can go in there like a, a bull in a China shop and just smash through everything, trying to deploy as many letters as you can to like rush it. But honestly, if you're trying to rush this business, well, you're going to be sorely disappointed because this is not a business that you're going to rush in my opinion, right? Like I've never seen anybody wake up and like have a, because they, they sent out a boatload of offers, uh, have a boatload of properties and then they have a boatload of sales. You kind of have to time it, right? Like when I got going, my goal was to buy a property a week and sell a property a week, just one a week. Like, let me see if I can just time this thing. And, you know, then, then I was selling one on a regular basis. I'm like, man, I better start buying two a week. So then, then all of a sudden I had to start pushing my mailings out to kind of keep up with the demand, you know, but if you go out and you buy, let's say 10 properties at one time, well, selling 10 properties like that that's a whole that's a lot of work in one month it really is and until you build up to that you're going to be disappointed you're going to probably burn yourself out so if you're just starting out well i would tell you to use some caution but if you've been doing this for a while and you know your numbers well then you know your numbers and you're going to listen to this call and you're like well whatever but it does bring up another question too right and that is i've had people tell me oh well I mail out a thousand letters and I get, I buy one. And if, if I mailed out a thousand letters and bought one, I would be like sick, like physically sick. So it begs the question, what is the response rate? I know mine, but what is yours? I mean, is it one per thousand or is it much better than that? Yeah. I mean, I think everyone made a good point and 
the consensus is don't, you can send out too many offers at one time. You want to be agile. You want to have a, you know, 20 at a time or 20 a day and do it consistently. You want to be able to gauge your market, make changes as you get feedback. And the analogy I wanted to make was, I love the, the working out analogy to this business, but imagine your first week of working out. You have never worked out before. You go into the gym and you want to bench, you know, what Bossman's benching. And if you guys haven't met Bossman at, at boot camp or Zena, like these are big guys, right? Like they're probably benching 250, 300, whatever, like big numbers. You, sh you shouldn't start off doing too much uh, that would you just, you'll get hurt. You're just literally going to hurt yourself or burn yourself out in that first month. Either way, it's no bueno. So, but to start off slowly, methodically and build up your team so that you can handle that type of, of volume, there's nothing wrong with it. But in the beginning, there's, there's nothing beats the, the, the slow and steady of the tortoise analogy. So I, I thought it was a really great topic and very clear. There was just no dissension that you can send out too many offers at once. Um, Scott Todd, what was the, the other question you wanted to ask? The response rate, like is one, are you happy with one per thousand? Is that what you're getting or is your response rate better or worse? Like what's your response rate? Cause I hear people tell me like, oh, I'm at a thousand offers and like I bought one and I'm like that I would be physically sick. Something's wrong in my opinion. Yeah, your response rate should be three to 5%. If it's not, your offers are too low. If it's over 5%, your offers are probably too high. You should probably get, be getting nervous. And I mean, these are the, the metrics that have been around forever. So, you know, I, it would be an interesting uh, question to just quickly pull the group. Scott Boston, what is your response rate? It depends on a couple different areas I'm mailing. Uh, so kind of my, my, uh, my sweet spot uh, is I'm, I'm typically able to purchase one, sometimes two properties out of every hundred mailings. Um, there's an area I work that's a little bit higher value land uh, where maybe I'm able to purchase one property out of every couple hundred mailings. Um, so I think it does depend a little bit on area, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I would, I would totally agree. If I'm sending out a thousand mailings, I'm not able to purchase a property or one property um, uh, that would indicate I'm doing something wrong. Absolutely. Uh, Eric Peterson. Um, I've got an area I'm mailing right now where I'm getting a higher response rate and am adjusting offer prices downward because exactly what you said, you know, I'm starting to see too many accepted offers, which tells me I should be buying for less. All right. Zen master, Mike Zeno. Yeah, typically the three to five percent, you know, um, response, but then the one to two percent on the close. And I think this also points to a huge, you know, this kind of goes back to another topic where people will sometimes. Oops, sorry, did I just disappear on you? No, you're back. Uh, where you know people would say, "I'm going to pick an area close to me to test this model out," and they live in like Pennsylvania or they live in like Massachusetts, and so, you know then they're sending out all these awful letters because they've already broke the model, right? So the model works from the beginning. It works left to right. You don't just kind of like plug in and say, okay, well, three to 5% out of uh, acceptance uh, rate or uh, response rate out of every hundred, great, let me mail my neighborhood. No, <laughs> I mean, there's a way, and a, there's a reason why we go where we go and do what we do. So anyway, I think that kind of, when we see these people talk about their, we could always, and we can always diagnose that too. Um, there's someone that was on our, we had a little get together last night, a pre boot camp get together, and someone had sent out a lot of letters with no response. And I said, let's sit down at boot camp. I guarantee you in two minutes we can diagnose that problem because we see it all the time. There are some very, um, and that's why when you scale up, as everybody's talking about, you can diagnose quicker and at a lower price point and with less work. And it just it makes so much more sense. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Mimi, how about you? Well, I go for a 5% acceptance rate, right? And 1% buy rate. In some of my counties, it's a little different, right? But as long as I'm buying at least one per hundred, then I keep my pricing the same. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I should have said that, that the response rate is different than the close rate. We are at a 1% close rate, but a three to 5% response rate. Uh, Scott Todd, what about you? Yeah, I'm right there, Mark. I, I actually buy about 1.7% of what we mail. And, you know, uh, so on a hundred, I'll, I'll buy, you know, 1.7 out of a hundred. So over the long term, that's what I've hit 1.7%. So what's, when what's I hear 0.7 someone, of a deal, <laughs> how do you close well, that? Well, you, you, know, you, you got to talk to the person like two thirds of the time. And they're like, okay, that's it. Listen, you, you got, <laughs> you got to think of bigger numbers. Like I do. You got to think like me more big, big numbers, not little numbers. Like, you know, I don't know, frontier property. <laughs> oh, right. Right. Oh, oh man. Oh. Well, See, we can't just have a love fest on this call. No, no, like, it's fine. Like each other. I mean, this... I'm going to start calling you 10x Scott Todd. I know, <laughs> I know you and Grant are, you know, flying your private jets all over <laughs> town and talking about how much bigger you think than everybody else. Listen, is this... I, I, I'm not going for the 10x on the tail. I'm going for like 100x on the tail. Uh, Even though his plane's probably like 100x mine. I don't know. It's just, it's just... <laughs> this, yeah, but this... I, I, I think it's, you know, you have a plane. You own a freaking plane. True, true, that's true. Yeah. And it's probably because you have 0.7 more deals than me. Yeah, that's right. This, this is probably a great time, Mark, to kind of ask. Um, last week, you and one other person were both missing, and we were wondering, was there a joint vacation there, happening? There was actually Boston three people wasn't... missing, Mike. Three people. Three. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So Mimi was accounted for. The two unaccounted are Mark... And, you know, his love fest partner, Scott Bossman. <laughs> wow. <laughs> listen, I, you know, look, I don't want to start any rumors or anything, but sometimes my wife does listen to the podcast and she's already jealous enough of Scott Bossman. So we can't really <laughs> look, you know, I, I, uh, I, I definitely have uh, an alibi of where I was. I was in New York I have a feeling for a business that conference. Now, yeah. you know, was I calling Scott constantly? Was I boxing him constantly? Yeah. Maybe. Okay. But were we, were we in the physical, physically in the same location? You can't prove it. Yes, There's no sir. proof. He There's posted a no photo. Proof. He posted a photo of two feet in front of a campfire. I would look closely at those shoes. <laughs> I would recognize them. Was that Mark Podolsky's shoes in front of the fire? Again, no comment. Anyways, I thought this was a, a, a great, a great roundtable interview and um, had tons of value. And now we're at that point in the podcast where we could put Mimi on the spot and ask her for her tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, maybe even a quote, something actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. Mimi Schmidt, what do you got? So this week, the tip is not really mine. John Burnett had posted mm. this. He uh, went and tested his deal of the week out at this website, mailtester.com, and saw an improvement. Uh, his spam rate was lower, so more people were getting the deal of the week. I have my marketing VA trying it for me today, so I'm really curious to see what she finds. So try it out. Mailtester.com. Yeah. All right. I love it. I love it. Well, I want to thank the listeners. I want to remind them that the only way that I'm going to be able to con convince the coaches to keep coming on this round table is if you do us three little favors, you got to subscribe, you got to rate, you got to review the podcast, send us a screenshot of that review to support at the We're going to send you the $97 passive income launch kit for free, as well as our wholetailing course, which is going to teach you how to double your money in 30 days or less. So please do that. Again, learn more about how you can start creating passive income, just like everybody on this call at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. All right, Scott Bossman, are we good? We are excellent. Eric Peterson, are we good? Great. Zen Master. Awesome. Mimi? Great. Scott Todd? We're good, Mark. All right, I want to thank all of you. Our future me wants to thank all of you for being a boot camp. It was a great boot camp in Phoenix. So the people are hearing this. It's we haven't had it yet, but I'm assuming it was great.
So it's always great, right? Yeah. It really is. It, it, it really, there really is nothing more special, I think, than being in that room where everybody is singing from the same song sheet. Everyone wants to help everybody else. And it's, it really is my favorite part of, of Land Geek is meeting everyone in person, you know, hearing people's stories in real time, watching people do the deals in real time. It's, it's, transform, it's really a, a transformative weekend. And if you're not gonna be at Phoenix, we've already booked San Antonio, January 10th through 12th. Learn more, email us support at thelandgeek.com. We'll have the booking link at thelandgeek.com forward slash bootcamp up as soon as possible, but certainly start planning uh, right now. And I think we're gonna be at the St. Anthony's Hotel again. We just signed contracts. I should name the note, I should know the name of the hotel, but I'm not 100% certain. I'm pretty sure it's St. Anthony's. The one we were at last year, it was, it's a great hotel. Right by the river walk. All right, are we ready to do this? Yes. One, two, three. Let's Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. Oh my gosh. It's pretty good today. Yeah. I mean, not bad. I know, Mark. You know, yeah. I've been getting a lot of phone calls, and this is the opening line. I hear you coming to Atlanta. <laughs> okay. The rumors, the rumor mill has started, and um, I am warming up to Atlanta in October. Yes. For sure. But it's all contingent upon Scott Todd and figuring out restaurants. Oh, I got so, it. Uh, no, there's no figuring it out. I got the restaurant. <laughs> you okay. do? Oh, then I, I'm signing contracts. All right, fine. Listen, I, 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 this restaurant's so good, I told my wife, and she's like, I might have to go there. <laughs> I'm telling you. Uh, and will, you, will you fly to Atlanta on your plane, Scott? I'm ho hoping, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's, uh, I, I, I've been I've been uh, scoping it out. It's about um, about three hour flight for me. Not bad. Wow. Not bad at all. That's not bad. I hear the Gilligan song, three hour tour. <laughs> <laughs> Might have to swoop in, what pick up it? Eric first. Give me a little yeah, another yeah. Extra hour. <laughs> you know. Sure. It's so, busy th yeah. So Thursday night, it's on me, I guess, to uh, to figure out a good restaurant for us foodies. <laughs> Not gonna delegate that. Should I? I feel like my pride's at, at stake here, considering how much Tate's been talking about Orlando in Tampa. What? Remember, you mainly Tampa. Hey, at the uh, at the boot camp in uh, August, no, a April, when we were at the same hotel. Where did we eat Thursday night? Same, like I know, I'm trying to date myself. I can't remember. I don't remember. Well, it was. It's, see, it's far from my area, so I do have to do some research. We're it's not. We're like 25, 30 minutes from but, where I live. But did we didn't leave the hotel that night? Did we? Did we? I don't, I don't think we did. The I hotel was good. The hotel at all. We I don't think we did. Hotel, didn't we? That's pretty weak. Oh. That, that, normally, when we go to Arizona, it's weak. Just saying. <laughs> wow, that point. really boy. When Scott cuts, he cuts deep. Point seven percent. <laughs> You're gonna see <laughs> the, the food. The food in, ta in Tampa is point seven percent better. Better. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good enough, man. That's all right. That's all right. Um, it's game on now. You're you're going to be eating your words the next podcast. I, I can't I can't wait I can't wait to like I'm going when we get up this call I'm going to go and get like a graphic designer to write like point seven I'm going to get t-shirts printed point seven percent. <laughs> I mean, you're going to show up to boot camp on Friday and like walk in the room and everybody's going to be holding their point seven shirts. <laughs> Bad enough that's like I have to I have to look at Eric's hashtag Team Scott shirt. Oh my god! Right now he's gonna get one that says hashtag Team Scott, and then like point seven. 
See, we're okay. looping Eric back in. Eric's been Eric's been hanging low, and oh, somehow he got looped back go? into the. Where did <laughs> Eric? Where'd you go? Uh, oh, he, he's showing you Team Eric. Hashtag Team Eric. He's working on the logo. He's working on it right now. He has oh, to. Yeah. <laughs> Eric, is that where you just went? Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. He's point seven percent better. Hi. Hi. All it's, right, Mark, uh, I, can't wait, I can't wait to see where we eat on Thursday. No, it's a dish best served cold. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, you Revenge. <laughs> Revenge. My French dish. Scott, everybody's going to have like an amazing meal. And like all Scott's menus are going to say in like, in like, it's like French is Revenge. Are you going to have the three course Revenge meal? Listen. The chef. The chef says prepared something very special for you. I, I got I got this cool thing on my phone called like Uber Eats. I can have any food I want delivered. Just saying. Yeah. Fake news. Really? <laughs> That's a thing now. I think we should just end this call now, Mark. I know we really should. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna go uh, curl up in the corner in fetal position with my. Uh, with my phone and do my Yelp research, and I'm bringing it. I'm Mark, bringing it. when you when you go for your haircut and they ask you if you want the one or two, say you want the point seven. Oh. <laughs> and on that, everyone have a great day, and uh, we'll see everybody in a few days. I'm point seven. So excited to see everybody. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you.